going to be talking about myself and how I got into the wig industry. And also, I did have a couple questions under my last video that I'm going to answer on this video. So, um, I'm going to do the questions last. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the wig industry for a little over two years. Um, almost three years. I got into the wig industry because I really and truly was supposed to do my own hair, like my own wigs. I was just up scrolling on Instagram one day and I came across a wig and I was like, oh, I need to, you know, try to make my own. So really and truly, it was really only to start making wigs for myself. And when I started making wigs for myself, my friends was like, Oh, you're pretty good, you know. Have you ever thought about selling to other people? And I was like, no, nah, not really. So they was like, you should start. So I was like, well, I think about it or whatever. Gave it a little thought. And this and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to try it out and see how it is to make wigs for other people. And that's when it all started. I ended up creating a logo, started buying business boxes like wig boxes i did a whole lot of research when i first started out i started out hand sewing the wigs and i was like yeah that ain't for me so i quickly you know realized that i wanted to move straight to the sewing machine i was told like oh you should wait you know do a couple wigs you know until you get the hang of it and then you know move to the sewing machine but i'm like nah, i got it yeah, <laughs> I got me a sewing machine. So when I first, you know, got my sewing machine, I stayed up all night. I didn't go to bed until 6 in the morning because I was up on the sewing machine. I was like, I got to get it, I got to get it. And it was my first wig on the sewing machine, and I still had that wig to this day. That was my everyday wig I was wearing. To this day, I still had that wig, and it was... Like to say it was my first time on the sewing machine, got it down pick. And that's pretty much why I didn't tell myself everything. I sit up, I research. I got a lot of time on my hand to be researching and looking up this, looking up that, trying to find different ways to upscale and a lot of stuff about the business. I, I do my research. I be up all night. Sometimes I don't go to sleep. Why well, I really go to sleep. I said I need to give me some melatonin to put me to sleep because I don't sleep. I be up like all the time. So yeah, that's pretty much how I got into the industry. So I started out with getting the little wig stand that you hook it onto the desk and then you oh uh, you know screw it onto the desk. I started out with one of them and I had one dome head. I did get a measure, measuring tape because they was like, you know, not everybody head is the same. So you got to get different dome heads. But I wasn't sure that, you know, this was something that I really wanted to do. So I wasn't going to go break the bank. So I bought one dome head, one little mannequin, you know, stand to go on the desk and I screwed it on. Yeah, my first week, my very, very first week that I hand sewed, <laughs> I jacked it up the part. Was about this wide and it, it was jacked up yeah i was jacked up it was my first one now when i did my first wig on the sewing machine oh it was a wrap it was cut you know we was dealt in because i guess what i was up every night doing my research how i need to be plucking these how my part need to be looking i ain't sleep it was no sleep it's no sleep when you're trying to get somewhere and you got somewhere to go you know what i'm saying yeah so, yeah, a little bit about myself. I told y'all I've been in the business for, might as well say, three years. Um, I have one daughter. And when I started my business, she was, she wasn't one year old yet. You know, she was still a baby when I started. So, um, imagine trying to be on the sewing machine and you got your baby and you're doing this, you're doing that. Yeah, it was it was hard y'all it was hard but guess what i did it we here you know what i have now is nowhere near what i had when i first started you know starting out i didn't really start out you know with a whole lot of money i basically used 
yeah, I just basically took like not even more than a hundred dollars and bought what I needed just to see how it would do. And you know, once I started getting sales, I was like, okay, then I'll give me some more stuff. So I was taking a portion of the sales I was getting, I was keeping some to basically pay myself for doing the wigs, and then I'll take another portion and put that up so that could be used to like re up on what I need, like products to get more mannequin heads different sizes to get everything that i needed for to make the wigs so i didn't really start out with a whole lot of money i know a lot of people do but me personally i didn't i didn't start out with no thousands of thousands of dollars you know just being honest but i worked my way up i got my big mannequin heads over behind me i got buku wig dome heads now you know mannequin stands and you I didn't basically grown so much throughout the years. And that's all I tell everybody. Like, if you're going to start out, you don't have to have it all down pack when you first start out. Now everybody have it all down pack. This is a part of the business. You're not going to come. I'm not going to say you're not going to come. Because some people, you know, been doing hair since they was a kid. I haven't. And that's pretty much where I basically got my name from. It's unbewoogable. Because me growing up, I was great tomboy. Like, I didn't get my hair done. I wasn't really wearing weave until I got on up in high school and I was dancing. So, I, I started to get weave then. But prior to that, baby, I, I was putting a little ponytail up there and I was rolling with them. So, my name originally come from, it's unbelievable that I am doing hair like i'm doing stuff in the wig industry because this i i didn't come you know how some people come up doing hair as a baby that wasn't me i wouldn't i wasn't worried about that i was a tomboy okay so it's really unbelievable that i'm doing stuff dealing with hell so that's kind of where my name originated from it's unbewoogable and i was like well you know i'm doing wigs and stuff so let me throw wig in there so it's unbewiggable and that's how i ended up coming up with the business name and as far as colors i was like pink i think pink is really the color that not everybody but most people come up with in the long long run little on down the line i think i'm gonna change it and switch to something else a different color i have been through about four logos i want to say three or four logos but the name stayed the same the name was always it's unbewiggable but the way that the logo looked and you know the colors was different i think i started out with red and black we migrated over to pink and gray and but so when you get into the business it's gonna be a whole lot of changes you're gonna be out of a whole lot of money on throughout but as far as like starting out you ain't gotta just come out the gate with thousands of dollars unless you want to but i wouldn't say go out and spend all this money if you just start now and you don't know if this is something that you really and truly want to do i wasn't sure how this was gonna turn out for me but i just pretty much knew that it wasn't no giving up so we kept working at it kept working at it and i was like oh you know i'm pretty good at this i learned quick i'm self-taught everything i teach myself so why not keep it going that's what i did so yeah um that's a little bit about me i'm not even sure if i really intro fully introduced myself to you guys on the first video i can't really remember but my name is brenda i'm pretty i think you guys you know pretty much knew that but i'm not sure but my name is brenda um i have one daughter been in the wig industry three years so hey when i got into business i i was you know how at the beginning of something when you learn something you in the books that was me when i first started i was in the books i was researching i was learning i was finding out wh what need to be done with this and it was trial and error I'm, I'm gonna say that it was trial and error because i didn't invest in taking no classes you know when i first started I didn't really, you know, get into the classes, you know. That's why I say I'm pretty much self-taught. So, I'm a machine. I taught myself that, stayed up 6 in the morning, learned that it wasn't a thing for me. I probably only made only two weeks hands-on before I switched over to 
with the sewing machine. So I wasn't hand sewing wigs long at all. I just knew that me hand sewing a wig because I'm like so particular and I'm a neat freak. So when I was sewing it, it had to be perfect. It had to, the, the stitches had to be the same. So it would take me hours to hand sew. And I'm like, uh-uh, nope, mm-mm. Got on the sewing machine. I started on the sewing machine. And the first day, it did take me a while because I told you I stayed up to like 6 in the morning working on the sewing machine. So it took me hours on that. But after I got a hang of it, I was, you know, flying through it, baby. I was moving and grooving, sewing that thing. It didn't take me long at all. It was trial and error. I ain't going to say I just was perfect coming into the game, but it just don't take me long to catch on to nothing. And I can overanalyze anything. That's just what I do. I sit and look at a picture of something and be like, oh, okay, so this is it, this it. And I do it. I, I don't know how to explain it. I overanalyze a lot. I can look at a picture and just overanalyze it and basically figure out, oh, they put that color placement right there. Oh, they did that. It's not hard. But... Yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm not going to say I had it easy in this industry because it do get hard. I still cry sometimes. I still run into customers that's not... You can't please everybody. Everybody want to be happy. This may be going on. This may be going on. You have to teach customers how to properly take care of this or do that. Because if not, then they're going to run into issues and then they'll bring it back to you. And it's up to you. You have to fix it because... It's all part of customer service, so you're not going to, everything is not going to be peach to creamy. That's okay. But, um, I'm not going to keep this video too, too long because it was just a little bit about me. And, I mean, I pretty much, I'm not going to say I pretty much post everything, but I'm very open. And so, it's not really much to me, like my background and how I started. I ba literally, basically... Woke up one day, was on Instagram, was scrolling and scrolling. I don't even know. It was like a little vendor. You know how the vendors be stealing people uh wigs and stuff, reposting them. So it was like a vendor site that had posted this random wig. It was no logo behind the wig or nothing. It was just the wig. Um, and so I was like, hmm, you know, I wonder if I can uh make wigs. I'm gonna try one on myself. And tried it on myself. I, I told you my first one, I jacked it up. So I was like, mm, I'm gonna try it again. And I and I'm not gonna. I didn't go out and buy new hair when I first started. I had hair I had in a bag from when I had like sew-ins or you know stuff like that. So I used that hair to practice on or hair that I sent to somebody to color for me, and they jacked it up. I just kept it, and I was like, maybe one day I can you know practice on do whatever whatever come up, you know. So I had it in the bag in the closet. I started practicing on it. I went from the jack up, no new hair. Now, the first time on the sewing machine, there was new hair. So in my head, I'm like, do you really want to jack this hair up? If you, if you jack it up or, you know, what you want to do? I decided to take a chance with that new hair that I had and bought. And I did it on the sewing machine. And that's probably why I was up to 6 in the morning. Because I'm like, I just bought this hair and spent this money. Can't jack this hair up. It got to work. And hey, it went from there. But, you know. It was, I'm not going to say it was easy peasy, but it do get hard. But I am going to answer some questions that I did get. So let me get my iPad. Hold on. Okay. So some questions that I got. Let me go to video. Okay. So someone said, hey girl, I have a question. So how much would you say you need to have put up? to actually start a business you know how people be penny pinching and stressing about money about how much would i need to start um just to reference back to what i said i basically didn't start out with a whole lot of money because i wasn't sure if this was something that i was gonna stick to so when i started out i started out with no more than a hundred dollars and i started getting my equipment piece by piece because um, I wasn't finna just go out. And I, I see on um, social media all the time where they be, they didn't started doing something. They went out and bought all this stuff like nails and this and forth. And they post and be like, hey, I have all this equipment. Anybody want to buy? 
I wasn't finna do that. I wasn't finna go out and buy all this stuff and then decide I didn't want to do it no more and be stuck with all the equipment trying to get it sold. So, I wasn't doing it. I started out piece by piece. I bought a mannequin head. I bought a, one mannequin stand. You know, I bought my needles, the thread. You know, I started out hand sewing. So, I started out with no more than $100. Now, as I started getting sales... I was managing that money and I was basically splitting it. I would pay myself, leave some just to re-up on product and to re-up on new stuff. So I slowly expanded. Now, some people that start out with thousands of dollars, I think it's pretty much preference. And me personally, I didn't start out providing hair. I probably didn't start providing hair for wigs until like my second year, if I'm not mistaken. I started out doing wigs, but I was letting everybody provide their own hair. I was doing provide your own bundles when I started out making wigs, you know. So, everybody had to bring their hair to me, and I'd make their wig. I'd measure their hair and make their wig that way. So, you know, I didn't have to put money to the side to buy a lot of hair from vendors because I didn't start out doing that. Now, when I got up to, you know, making more sales, that's when I started branching out and basically... You know, having money on the side that I can um, go and buy this, buy that, what I needed. That's when I started buying hair to test to make sure. Because you're going to be out of some money when you're testing vendors. So, you know, it's really preference of how much you really want to start out with. Because it can be done starting out with less than $100. And if you want to start out doing wigs, just have them to provide their own hair to you. Until you find a good vendor with your hair. And then you, you find out your pricing and how much you're going to charge. And, you know, this, that, and the full. You can do on-hand bundles. Like, you can take, like, once you get vendors' prices and stuff, you can go and do bulk orders. Like, if you decide to have hair and wigs on hand, you can do bulk orders. I don't provide pre-made wigs. I construct all my wigs myself, so uh, all of my wigs are custom made, so they are a little more expensive than pre-made wigs. Now, um, pre-made wigs normally is a, a little bit cheaper than custom wigs, but me personally, I don't offer pre-made wigs as of yet. So, uh, starting out, it's really, I would say, it's really about what you plan on doing. I would say plan out how you want to, you know, go about your business. Do you want to only be doing selling bundles? Do you only want to be doing pre-made wigs? You know, it's really preference. And once you find a vendor and you see their prices, that's really and truly how much you would know that you would need to start out being on what you decide you want to do. That's my intake on it. Okay, so we had another question. It said, what made you get passionate about making wigs or what sparked your interest of working in the beauty industry overall um really my own hair basically um sparked my interest in working in the beauty industry because like i told y'all i was a tomboy and you know i would get on social media and i would see the girls they fancy bags they makeup done so you know, they always had their hair did, you know, they switched their wigs. And I was like, let me learn how to make wigs so I could be switching my wigs. And, you know, let me learn how to do my makeup. You know, so I, would, I started out trying to do makeup because I was trying to, you know, I was brainwashed. Like, okay, maybe I should move towards always being dolled up, makeup always done, hair always done. So I started out doing makeup, learning how to do my makeup. My boyfriend had and bought me all this, you know, makeup stuff that I had, so I started doing makeup or whatnot. And then that's when I seen the wigs. And I was like, let me try to do my own wig. You know, I didn't learn how to do makeup. Let me try to add on, you know, doing my own hair. So that's really what sparked my interest because I let social media, you know, basically make me feel like I needed to change my appearance. Basically let social media make me feel like I needed to change my whole image to to fit the black girl luxury norm or whatnot. And shortly after that, I figured like, I don't have to do that. I'm not no Starbucks girl. I'm not no Target girl. My baby is, my baby, she gotta go to Target every day. I don't know where she get that from. But she gotta go to Target every day, y'all. But me personally, I wasn't, you know, that kind of girl. That was the me. 
but i did learn to get into makeup and hair industry you know once i started doing it i liked that part of it but i i surely realized like oh i don't have to dress up in all these fancy clothes these fancy bags and I always got my nails done you see my nails now i didn't switch to the press on girl so i can pop them on pop them out i don't really care about you know nails and stuff like that or whatnot i just got into you know wearing purses and stuff so that really sparked my interest in the industry but i'm glad it did because once i got into doing it i actually started liking it and i started doing more of it so i hit the ground running and i went with it and i've had bad days i've had good days and i wouldn't trade it for nothing i actually love what i do and if i would not have been on social media scrolling i don't know what i'd be doing right now probably working a nine to five i'd be at home all day and that's pretty much what i do um you said the questions the first part of the question said what made you passionate about wig making once i um started selling the wigs to people and i would see customers posting their pictures smiling i was just like i'm an, and i'm an emotional person i'm i'm an emotional person so once i seen people smiling and i would like tell my mom that like i made that i made that wig on her head and i would get all the reviews like you have blessed hands that's all I needed to heal. And that that gave me that, that drive, that motivation to keep going and don't stop. And it's like every time I wanted to quit, because there was times I did want to quit. Because I'm like, man, I don't know if God telling me I need to do something else. I'm not making no money at this point. You know, maybe it's something else that I need to be doing. I go to try to quit. And this thing, no, I get a flood of orders. Flood of orders coming in. So I'm like okay, God, I get it. You don't want me to quit, but what am I doing wrong? What do I need to change? I'm still figuring it out as I go. But like I said, this right here, doing the whole It's Unbewookable Talks is, you know, new to me. And I'm still finding my way, trying to find my, my niche and what is truly for me. So, um, but once I started getting all those customers, sending in those reviews, posting reviews about how my customer service was A1 and that, that was, that was it for me. I pretty much loved it and it kind of just did something to me, you know, so I had times where I'd cry, I'd be reading reviews and I'd just be crying and crying because y'all, I was a problem child, Okay. I was a problem child coming from where I came from to now. I'm so proud of myself because I don't be out here carrying out on social media no more trying to fight this person and that person. I don't do that no more. Like my business then really made me get into this professional mode. Like I can't be out here doing this. I can't. You know? And also my baby, my baby watching me. I can't be out here crashing out doing this and doing that. So I hold myself to a different standard now that I'm a business owner. I don't be out here acting like a hooligan no more. Maybe that was God reasoning for putting me in this industry. Like, you need to get it together. You need to pull yourself together. So I'm still learning. I still talk to God every day because we all need guidance. And I'm just following what I feel like he's telling me to do. Hey, that's what I'm doing. But, yeah, y'all. So, that's pretty much how I got into the the wig industry, a little bit about myself, my passion about wigs. I may go a little more in depth. I'm going to try to go live maybe next Tuesday for the next Unbewookable Talk so you guys can ask me more questions and I can answer it, you know, right then and there. I may go live on, um, I'm not sure if I want to do TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. So, um, you, I would love if you guys will be following me on each site. So, you guys will, you know, be notified. You can turn on the notification bell so you will know where I'll be going live and when. But, um, I will give y'all more details about that. I'm going to post it to my sites so on where exactly I'll be going live at. But, um, I thank you guys for tuning in to this Unbelievable Talks. 
Um, I didn't get many questions. I only had two. So we starting out kind of slow. Not many. Um, I did get a lot of subscribers to come in, but um, the views are still low at this point. The likes are still low at this point. But hey, you know, you have to start somewhere. We're just starting out. So we'll gradually work our way up and we'll be one of them girls with 2Ks, 30K subscribers. Hey, we're getting there. So everything always starts out slow and I understand it. So I'm loving the journey. I am loving talking with you guys. So next Tuesday, I'm not exactly sure what's going to be our topic next Tuesday, but I am going to try to go live. I may go live um, while I'm working doing a wig or something like that and you guys could ask me questions and talk to me while i am working on wigs and um we'll go from there but i will let you guys know where i'll be going live so y'all won't miss it and yeah i thank you guys for tuning in to it's unbewigable talk see you guys next tuesday at 5 p.m central don't miss it make sure y'all subscribe and thank you guys for tuning in thumbnail